Hey everyone, this is Anton from Pocket Now, and you're watching the HTC One Mini Review, the HTC One in a miniature size. I don't have it on me because I use it to record this intro, so without any further ado, let's jump to the review. The HTC One Mini is, in every aspect, a miniature version of the One flagship. HTC tried to identify an address, a niche, a specific segment of the market, with the One Mini. Who are those future possible buyers? Those that love HTC's design this year, but consider the 4.7 inch form factor to be too big, or find the one to be too expensive. Needless to say, that the main competitor, Samsung, has a Galaxy S4 Mini on the market, and HTC needs to address that with a competing device. The One Mini is for the S4 Mini, what the One is for the S4. Fierce competition. We've already reviewed all devices mentioned previously over at PocketNow. To read about every aspect of those phones, check out the reviews and follow PocketNow on social media to stay up to date with everything. Just like its bigger brother, the HTC One Mini speaks premium, from the moment you first see it until you start to feel the cold aluminum while holding it. And we couldn't be more delighted about HTC fixing some of the issues with the hardware design of the HTC One. Let's start with the plastic. While the One has slight issues with minimal gaps between the aluminum and plastic on the sides, HTC went with a different plastic which is also now thicker, embracing slightly the front glass and the back aluminum on the HTC One Mini. We also need to add that the camera protector glass is slightly recessed, so that you can't easily scratch it. On the One, it was flush. And the Beats audio branding on the back is marked differently than the One on the One, which, in our particular case, lost the Beats part. It wore off. Those concerned about the size of the One Mini should note that, despite being on paper just a little bit smaller than the One, it actually feels a lot smaller in the hand. We'll wrap up this outer aspect and material segment by telling you that it is one of the most premium feeling devices we've ever handled. Well built, solid and great materials. The inside is more mini compared to the One than the outside. The specs are no longer powerhouse and flagship worthy, but solid mid-ranger like. This doesn't impact on performance, as you'll see further in this review, but it is worth mentioning that it is, at least on paper, a slower phone. The display is a 4.3 inch Super LCD 2 screen with 720p resolution and a PPI rating of 342, protected by Gorilla Glass 3. The processor is a dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz, and the memory is 1GB for the RAM and 16GB for the internal storage. Yes, non-expandable. Boom sound delivers solid stereo performance, and radio offers Wi-Fi ABGN, Bluetooth 4.0, GPS, HSDPA and LTE capabilities. HTC ditched the IR blaster and left out NFC. The camera is identical to the one on the bigger brother. 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera with LED flash, paired with a 1.6 megapixel front facer. Powering everything is a 1800mAh battery, and Android 4.2.2 with HTC Sense 5 on top of it. The entire software suit and overall user experience is identical to the one found on the HTC One flagship. For a detailed look at everything, check out our full HTC One review. Everything applies here too. We'll just mention the most noteworthy features. Android 4.2.2 is fast. The Snapdragon 400 inside the phone is fast. The HTC One Mini is fast. Sense 5 is subtle, modern, and brings a breath of fresh air in a world dominated by either stock Android or TouchWiz. It goes deep, but at the same time, it is light. Blink feed still can't be disabled and still takes up a slot number one for the home screens. If you like it, you can have all the info from your social networks and several content providers, including Pocket Now. but if you prefer not to use it, set your home screen number two as default and clear all subscriptions. You can fill the four home screens, there's a maximum number of five available to the user, but Blinkfeed takes up one slot with widgets and icons. There are a couple, not too many though, but luckily the Play Store has a truckload. The notification shade can be accessed by swiping with either one or two fingers, depending on whether you want to see your actual notifications or quick toggles. The most notable software offering on the phone is as in the One's case, the gallery application. HTC thankfully removed social media pictures from the app, so you will only see your own events and albums. The gallery is live and allows you to create highlights out of your pictures and videos. New themes have been added so you can explore your creativity. Snapping pictures was never easier with the camera app. You can shoot stills in several modes and with a lot of real-time effects. Or you can shoot Zoe's, a sequence of stills which you can further tweak to select the best frame, remove unwanted objects, have a sequence shot, see your friends always smile, and a lot more. For an in-depth look at the camera and gallery applications, 
check out our full dedicated video in the description below. There are a couple of things we don't necessarily like and which HTC can easily fix. The lock screen can only feature Google Now and Google Plus posts as widgets and the power section in settings still doesn't allow you to see screen on time. We spent 9 solid days with the One Mini as our daily driver and we are impressed. When we compared it to the One flagship, we saw that it doesn't lag behind and when it's slower, it's just a millisecond or two slower, which is really negligible. We are still not sold on the camera, just like we're not sold on Blink Feed. The camera with the Ultra Pixel marketing name delivers mediocre shots, regardless if you're inside or outside. It's not the best shooter out there, it's not the worst either. 4 megapixel images are snapped and there's not a single thing about the camera that impresses us. Shots are okay. Battery life on the other hand is good. As our daily driver for more than a week, the HTC One Mini was the phone that answered our needs when it came to email, calendar, phone calls, text messages, social media on several websites, YouTube, Spotify, browsing the web, snapping pictures, navigating and even workout tracking. We've got a solid day and a half with the One Mini. Once we depleted it in a single day and once it lasted us for two days. Call quality was good both using the earpiece and the speakers. Which reminds us, boom sound is everything you'd expect from it, loud and clear tunes or voice. However, it's different from the One flagship. We're not talking about loudness, but overall music. It sounds a tiny tad tinier than music on the One, but nonetheless offers a great experience. Data speeds were also consistent with other phones, flagships or not. Overall, we enjoyed our time with the One Mini. For all the reasons we mentioned in this review, we are rating the One Mini an 8.5 out of 10. Everyone, that's gonna do it for today for the HTC One Mini review. This footage is also recorded by the HTC One Mini. I've been Anton Dinoid. You can follow me on Facebook as well as on Twitter. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.